In the headlines, appeal court upholds Alex Oti's election as Abia governor. Fire guts GSM market in Jigawa. NCAA lifts suspension of airline over Abuja-bound flight arrival in Asaba. And on the foreign scene, Guinea-Bissau violence continues. Hello and welcome to News Update on Trust TV. I'm Sagir Ibrahim. Thanks for joining me. Well, hello and welcome once again. The appeal court in Lagos has dismissed the appeals brought before it by the People's Democratic Party uh, against the All, Progressive, the All Progressives Congress APC and their governorship candidates against the election of Governor Alex Oti of Abia State. In a unanimous decision on Saturday, the three-man appeal court panel upheld the victory of Oti at the polls, saying that it conformed with the provisions of the Electoral Act. The appellate court ruled that the petitions brought before the appellants lacked in merit, describing them as a comedy skit brought to democratic setting. The court said issues of political party membership is a pre-election matter which also falls within the jurisdiction of the political party. It further said since Oti joined the Labour Party, won its primary election and submitted his name to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, he was qualified to contest. And also, the KB state government has hailed members of the vigilante service in Kanzana General Area for neutralizing a notorious kidnapper by the name Dogo Oro, who terrorized two local government areas of the state. The commendation was contained in a statement on Saturday in Birning Kebi by Ahmed Idris, the chief press secretary to the governor. He said Oro had made life difficult for people living in Bunza and Kalgo local government areas. Idris said the government was happy with the report that the criminal was eliminated by some members of the vigilante service at Tunga village in Tilly Ward of Bunza local government area. According to Idris, the recent successes recorded against criminal elements may not be unconnected with the holistic approach of security agencies to make the state safer for all. He said that Governor Nasir Idris had pledged to render more support to all security agencies, including the vigilante service working to secure the state. Still on security, suspected armed robbers in Oshun State who snatched a Toyota Camry car said they carried out the operations with fake firearms. The commissioner of police in the state, Ishak Muhammad, who disclosed this said such robbers take advantage of darkness to operate. Hamid Oyegbadi has more on the details. Along the Ife Ibadan Expressway, four suspected armed robbers snatched a black Toyota Camry car from the owner. Under the cover of the night, the suspect pointed toy guns at their victims and dispossessed them of the car and other valuable items. The collects uh, Toyota Camry. They cut and fabricates a wood that looks like a gun. So in the night when they put it at their victim, they will dispossess him of his not knowing that it's just a, it's just a toy that they use. I joined my gang members for the robbery operation around the Ife, Elisha area. There, the police arrested us. Also, a suspected burglar, Oladele Damilola, was apprehended by the police for burgling a shop at Agombelewo area in Noshobo. I went to Bogusan shop by using uh, passing through the ceiling to enter and pack some food stuff and some kitchen kitchen uh, equipment and also some gas cylinder and generator. The commissioner of police in the state, Isaac Mohammed, called on residents to assist police with useful information to enable them tackle crime effectively. I would like to tell the people of Oshin State that the new sheriff is in town. And all the criminals should leave because we are going after them. 
We will leave no stone unturned to ensure that there is peace in Oshin State. And people should go about their lawful business. I would like to urge the general public that when they see something, they should say something. The CP said the suspects will be charged to court after investigation have been concluded. Amid Oye Bade, Trust TV News, Oshobo. Also, no fewer than three shops and valuables worth millions of naira were destroyed on Friday by fire at Bakin Kaswa in Hadija local government area of Jigawa State. The spokesman of the National Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, in the state, Adamu who confirmed the incident in Duse on Saturday. Shehu said the inferno raised three shops, a stall and part of a mosque in the area. He explained that although the exact cause of the fire was yet to be ascertained. Eyewitnesses, however, claimed that the fire started from a spark from an electrical pole close to one of the shops. Shehu said the fire was put out by the combined efforts of personnel of the NSCDC, fire service, and residents of the area. According to him, no casualty was recorded in the incident, but properties and valuables worth millions of naira were lost. And also, the Senate building of the Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria, has been gutted by fire on Friday. A statement issued by the Director of Public Affairs, Directorate of the University, Awal Umar, said the fire started around 4.15 p.m. on Friday evening from a small room housing an electrical distribution board at the ground floor of the Senate building. The statement, however, said the cause of the fire incident could not be immediately ascertained. According to the statement, although no injuries or casualties have been recorded, the distribution board and some obsolete public address systems have been consumed by the fire. He said the timely intervention of the university firefighters and security personnel saved the situation from escalating, adding that power has since been restored to the building. The vice chancellor, Kabir Bala, who was at the scene of the incident, along with some management staff and hundreds of sympathizers, commended the university firefighters and security personnel for putting out the fire. Also, an evening fire on Friday gutted a popular interior shop along Complex Road in Ekpan, Uwe, local government area of Delta State, destroying shops with goods worth millions of naira. The electrical parking store section of the interior store was not affected, but parts of the interior store was raised by the fire as, build it, as the building was affected. Reports say the incident occurred after beds restored, BEDC rather, restored power in the area. It was, however, gathered that the Delta State Fire Service had been reached to rescue the situation. In a short video from the scene of the incident, some of the victims were seen making frantic efforts to salvage as much as they could before the arrival of the fire service at the scene. This is the news update on Trust TV, coming up shortly. Cigna market laborers demand increased pay to meet economic realities. More news after this break. Stay with us. The famed giant of Africa is battling an identity crisis with severe economic downturn. We have seen during Shagari, fall of Naya, but Babangida's time was historic. It was unprecedented. All Nigerians. The Nigerian economy has been in steady decline. No growth and a sharp drop in production makes matters worse. The more you push your economy to get integrated into the global market economies, the more you increase the use of dollar. How did we get here? We have been working every nook and cranny, running helter shelter, trying to seek dollar so that we can also meet with the demand of our people. And the same Nigerians who turn around and say, CBN should supply dollar into the market, or government should supply, where are you going to supply from? As the value of the Naira plummets, is obsessive comparison with the dollar helping matters? Once people believe that 
the currency cannot retain its value. They find alternative ways of, of savings. Why is the Naira on a free fall? And what are the solutions? Journey with us back in time to where it all began. Why did you develop this reputation as somebody who is difficult to <laughs> work with? I will tell the truth. Mm. No matter whose ox is worn, I will say exactly how it is. This is where I actually sympathize with commissioners of nowadays. Mm. Where a commissioner sometimes is just a picture. You find somebody, even a cleaner and the governor's wife can interfere with their, with their abilities. Even the ministers, there are very many who respected me simply because I never complained about them. I never went to ask for a favor, uh, never. So none of that has happened? Nothing. But it, it, if it hasn't happened, do you have hope that now the, another it, government coming in? There is no hope. So you have given up on, I've, on, I've on given politics? I've given up. Politics. It's gone, it's gone. Retrenchment from work is the most hated thing by unions. It's a loss of job. Uh, means that is loss of life, in fact, for, for civil servants at that time. Nigeria's economy, Nigeria's security, Nigeria's intelligence, this is what the materials we were handling. And I thought government would be very interested. The reasons why you adopted federalism is not because of finesse, not because you like it, it's because of its functional utility. We started manufacturing leather since 1958. But the most important thing is that if the system is checked correctly, we won't, we won't have where we are now. If somebody has depression, they may just be very irritable and unproductive in the office. So you find on average already about one in four, one in five Nigerians already have a mental illness, a mental health condition that needs some form of attention. Uh, no matter how good an economy is, if the federal government goes past, believe me, everything in that economy is just a matter of time, it will go past. Uh, so first of all, about uh, maybe slightly above, below 70% is in federal government securities. If government has uh, banned importation of fertilizer and states are doing it at the level of governors, but I believe that production and distribution of fertilizer should be left to the private sector. Uh, this is the general multipurpose card and it has a chip here. So this chip is about 80 kilobytes. The one that you get from the bank for ATM is just 4 kilobytes. So this is like 20, 20 times. Welcome back. If you're just joining, you're watching the news update on Trust TV. Now, recap of some of our top stories. Appeal Court upholds Alex Oti's election as Abia governor. Also, fire guts GSM market in Jigawa. Moving on to more stories now. The Federal Housing Authority, FHA, has demolished the Abolia Do Garden Estate in Phase 2 of Festac Town situated off the 7th Avenue in Lagos State. The demolition, which tore down numerous homes, left residents grappling with the aftermath of the colossal disaster. Now, Trust TV's Victoria Tokolo, who recently visited the site, reports that residents now facing the harsh reality of their homes being reduced to rubble are imploring the federal government to come to their aid by providing them with suitable housing infrastructure. Here's that report. The Federal Housing Authority initiated a demolition, citing non-compliance with building regulations. Many structures were found to be built on roads, while some lacked proper identification numbers. According to one estate official, a warrant issued in 2021 mandated a halt to construction, with only pre-existing structures to be accommodated 
and numbered. Only those who had completed their structures were to be accommodated and assigned house numbers. However, some individuals defied this directive, hence the demolition. Some affected homeowners echoed the pain and frustration brought about by the demolition. We fetch these roads. We were now asking, how did the road come and where is the road going? Because this place now is more than 120 uh, meters. So what kind of roads do they want to build in this location? The government knows that as a citizen, as a government, you is your responsibility to provide housing, infrastructure, as a social amenities. Shelter, shelter is one of them. So I don't like in a situation that the government will not provide housing, shelter for the citizen. If the citizen happen to provide shelter, they will come and destroy it. One of the affected owners is an army general residing in a house purportedly built on a road. This, the resident said, exemplifies the impartiality in the exercise, stressing the importance of treating all citizens equally, irrespective, social, tribal, or religious differences. People that have not gotten their over number, that is why they can move their house. But some of them are paid the money, but they see the money in their house. I have one of that that I'm working with. He paid 32 million to the illegal air pressure. And yet, he still send another 30 million to them. They see the money in the house. They beat the man and put him in Black Maria. When the twins' brother was shouting, they raised the guy. When they came 2021, it's like they used their drone to number some houses in this area to ask, told some people, and told us not to build again. That maybe uh, if we build in the police, some people were lucky. After building, they gave them money. So people were unlucky. So after building, they were not giving them money. The houses Meanwhile, stakeholders in the real estate sector have advised that prospective builders should seek approval from the Federal Housing Authority before embarking on any construction projects. This day said will not only avert potential pain and agony, but also contribute to the overall development and compliance within the country's housing sector. Now, workers in Singa market of Kano State are calling on traders to increase their loading and unloading fee given the current economic situation in the country. Earlier, reports indicated that laborers in the market are being paid less than expected. Trust TV's correspondent Idris Jibrin, who went round the market, reports that a carton of noodles is loaded or offloaded at the cost of 10 naira. Here's that report. Inside Singa market, Hundreds of youth from different parts of Kano State and beyond engage in different kinds of job, from loading and offloading of different kinds of goods. Over the years, however, there seems to be no fixed rate for what these youth do in the market. According to them, they are being paid between 7 and 10 naira per carton and between 20 and 30 naira per bag of 50 kg of rice flour or sugar. We are talking about the issue of uh, our increment. Before they are paying us 10 naira, they have now increased it from 10 naira to 20 naira and uh, from 20 naira to 40 naira. So some are paying that uh, 40, 40 naira. Some are still not paying the 40, 40 naira. Before now, they are paying us 7 naira. Later, they have increased it from 7 naira 
to 20 naira, up to 40 naira. But some are paying that amount. Some are still not paying that amount. But what we are saying here as laborers, we want to call on all traders to ensure that look at what is happening. The price of goods and services have increased. So they should also increase our rate so that we don't need to, to come and protest to them or we don't need to go anywhere complaining about how they are paying us. According to the chairman of the laborers, there is no standard price for loading and offloading goods in the market. He said some traders pay more than others, depending the nature of the goods. Honestly, there is no standard rate of what they are paying us laborers in this market. But now, thank God, we have a, a single market development association, which is trying to come up with a fixed price and as i am talking to you now this market union is trying to bring together all laborers in the market so that we can have a fixed price but unfortunately i must tell you that we don't have fixed price as to how they are paying our laborers in this market meanwhile the market leadership argued that some goods are not heavy enough to be paid the same as the others. But the market authority is discussing with the leadership of laborers in order to come up with a fixed amount. Honestly, we in single market, we have structure. Only that it is not uniform because we have different shops, we have different dealers, we have different traders. The way this trader will uh, pay his laborers will be different from the way the other, the next uh, trader will pay his laborers. But what we are trying to do here as market leaders is to bring together all those major leaders and, uh, and traders so that we can see how we can come up with fixed price so that these laborers that are working for us here we would have a fixed amount of whatever they are loading or offloading to make sure that we are paying them uniformly right now we are in the process of doing that and in the next coming days i am assuring you that we will come up with this fixed amount for our laborers in this single market Although these laborers are responsible for whatever goods come to the market, but their payment has remained a major source of concern for several years now. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. And in business now, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, has lifted the suspension placed on part, the Part G operation specifications of United Nigeria Airlines. This is coming following the suspension of the Part G operation specifications of United Nigeria Airlines by the NCAA after one of its aircraft landed passengers at the Asaba International Airport on Sunday rather than their destination, Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Naya in Abuja. However, in a statement dated December 1st, 2023, the NCAA said its investigation into the unfortunate incident revealed lack of adequate liaison between the LISAS OCC and the LISIS OCC, which omitted appropriate flight briefing from the point of departure. The agency noted that the investigation also revealed that cockpit crew and the cabin crew did not hold pre-flight briefing before embarking on the flight, adding that the OCC flight monitoring of the United Airlines does not monitor the aircraft in the company's wet lease aircraft, as well as non-adherence to approved flight ATC plan. Also, Nigeria and Germany on Friday signed the Presidential Power Initiative Agreement to improve electricity supply in Africa's most populous nation. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngelale, who disclosed this in a statement, said the signing was presided over by President Bola Tunubu and the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. While the managing director of the Nigeria's power company, Kenya Nui, signed on Nigeria's behalf, the managing director, Africa, Siemens AG, Nadja Hackensen, signed for Germany. Speaking after the signing ceremony in Dubai, Anuwe highlighted Siemens Energy's effective delivery of crucial equipment worth 
over 63 million euros to the country since the project commenced. According to Ingelale, the agreement will see to the end-to-end -end modernization and expansion of Nigeria's electric power transmission grid with the full supply, delivery and installation of cement manufactured equipment within 18 to 24 months. He emphasized that the agreement will ensure project sustainability and maintenance with full technology transfer and training for Nigerian engineers at the Transmission Company of Nigeria. And away from Nigeria, two people died and several were injured overnight in Guinea-Bissau in clashes between two army factions that broke out in the capital after National Guard soldiers freed an opposition minister, the army said on Friday. Fighting began overnight and continued into Friday morning after soldiers from the National Guard stormed a police station where Finance Minister Suleiman Saidi and the Secretary of State for Treasury Antonio Montero were detained after the arrest on Thursday night. The army said order was restored on Friday afternoon in the tiny West African country where coups and unrest have been commonplace since it gained independence from Portugal in 1974. Saidi is a member of the former ruling PAIGC party, which leads the coalition that won a majority in legislative elections in June. That result halted President Umar Sissoko and Balo's plan to push through a constitutional change that would have allowed him to consolidate power by removing the country's semi-presidential system, which PAIGC is opposed to. And in the meantime, the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, has con commended, condemned rather, the latest outbreak of fighting in Guinea-Bissau, where the situation had returned to calm on Saturday. Clashes between members of the National Guard and Special Forces of the Presidential Guard broke out on Thursday night in the capital, Bissau, leaving two dead. In a statement, ECOWAS further called for the arrest and prosecution of the perpetrators of the incident in accordance with the law. And that's it for news updates at this hour. Do well to follow us across all of our social platforms and watch our live stream on YouTube for more news documentaries and programs. I'm Sagir Ibrahim. Thanks for watching.